Here we have the CMZ L450 Shaper in action. Taking a very light finishing cut. Just on the work piece. Bit of scrap model steel. It's got a shaving tool in it. It's just an acceptable finish. However, in this sticky, furry material, you can never get anything like a dry finish. Uh, that's quite a good job. There's been a lot of bad press about shapers. I don't believe any of it. This machine costs me very little to run and does a lot of good work, especially of squaring up large work pieces. Let's zoom you in a little closer. Now, and that's a good shot. The pair of them taken off. The auto feeds a little bit sticky on this machine. We'll come back in a second. Hello everyone, welcome back to In My Shed. I'm BC, that old bloke. A bit of a story today about shaping machines and what they can do. Uh, we'll get it running again and I'll zoom you in for a close up this time on the shaving tool. Uh, the feed hadn't uh, been sticky yet, it had just gone across the workpiece. That's why there was no more chips and smoke. Uh, I quite like the old girls, they're aesthetic, they're solid, they only last a couple of hundred years and uh, do good work and do lots of things that's difficult to do on the milling machine. So we'll bring you in close up, we'll run it through another cycle and then we'll take the tool holders out, put them up on the borer table and have a bit of a look at what you can buy from overseas and local, very very cheap and they're also good tool holders for the lane as well. Okay, bring you back. Okay, back again. This is looking at it from the working end. We'll make a little bit of noise and get it to drive across. I just give it a bit of rapid by hand. There we are. We're nearly engaged to the work. For a big machine like this, it's cut us. Cut us. But even a little 11 inch cutlass I had before. And this sort of work is very easy to do. Now this is what a shaper is really good for. Something that's much longer than it is wide. And you could have three or four strips of 25 by 12 up on edge in there. Uh, load the guys up, walk away, and the job's done without having to attend it. See the little curly wheels are still coming off. We'll show you the tool close up later on. And if the work piece is really big, you take the guys off the table and drop the work piece directly to the table. Just to see the machine much larger than this, putting a keyway in a pulley that was over a metre in diameter. And just effortlessly cranking buckles and coils. They're good machines to use. You could go a little bit faster than the stroke from this, but I'm more for using it so that that's what put the next guy in. A little bit lazy. Okay, that's a proper job. Time for me to stop talking, put the tool holders up on the board table. There you go, I've wiped most of the crud off and zoomed you in as good as I can. Uh, it's not a fabulous finish, but then you can't achieve much better on a surface grinder, I've tried. Uh, I don't know what they put in the mild steel now, but it's just furry, horrible stuff to use. It doesn't turn up well. But it's a nice flat surface. Uh, you do have to deburr it, it'll bring edges up, but so easy to achieve. Okay, on to the tooling. Okay, again, back here at the borer. I'm using this table because it's the only flat surface not covered in crap in this shed. I got the tools out for the shaper and the internal slotting tool that I built up but never completed. I'll get on back of the camera, zoom you in, and you can have a closer look. I 
okay, autofocus might be a bit of a pain here, but we'll see what we can do. Um, these are old fashioned high speed steel tool holders. I've got uh, one in Australia, I think. This one, which is an old Walton made in America. Uh, these are lock tools made in Australia. This one I've modified for use in the lathe. I've taken a bit of material down. Uh, I absolutely love these tools. And one of the reasons why, just undo the knob and allows you to slide the tool in and out, rotate the head, make it a left hand tool, make it a right hand tool. You can get the tool out and do a quick lap on it very, very quickly and slide it back in if you get the right orientation. Yeah, so it's not hard to do. Uh, very, very good on the lathe. You can make it a left hand tool and a right hand tool. And you can buy small braised carbide tools and run in there as well. So it gives you a big sturdy holder, but you only have to buy the smaller high speed steel, which is a much more affordable item. High speed steel nowadays, except if you go to Victor Machinery in the States, is very expensive. There's the second one, exactly the same, different tooling in it. Here's a pattern that comes from the States. It's Walton, America. Uh, absolutely fabulous tool. It's got a ramp on that side. The tool bit fits on this side. You can run square, you can run round, high speed steel. And it indexes around in 45 degree increments. If you can get the block to turn. Yeah, there you are. So for shape of work, if you're doing quite a deep box cut, you can do left hand and right hand. I usually run these with the tool lagging behind the tool centre, so it gives you less chatter on the shaper. Okay, boring bar holder. This is one I made for using in the shaper. Tools are held in by a couple of grub screws. I have made a boring bar, but like a lot of things I've made, <laughs> it's disappeared. But I did make this up for smaller bores, and that hole has been squared up roughly with this squaring tool in the slotting machine. A slip sleeve fits over the outside of the bar and drops into this holder. So you get the rigidity of the holder without a bottom. So the tool bottom outs near the, the holder's not a through hole, and that stops it sliding away as you're working. So tools are quite easy to make. Now here's a couple of attempts at carbide and my map torch just quite couldn't get there but nevertheless the first hit the carbide just absolutely shattered. No bloody good. Here's the second attempt with the sturdier piece of grade 883 carbide from Carboy which I found to be indestructible over the years. Uh, I got moderate success but it just couldn't keep its edge. I don't know why. And here's a bit of high speed steel I showed last week for doing that 3-8 keyways. Reasonably easy to grind and it's one tool where an offhand grind will be good enough uh, as long as you measure up the correct width here. And I usually leave a little bit at the front uh, that you haven't completely cleaned up uh, so that you can grind the end of the tool three or four times without losing the dimension. But you can always side cut to get the dimension on your keyway. And something I forgot to mention last time we were talking about these tools. A lot of guys wonder what do you lap your tools with. Well, high speed steel tooling can be lapped with a silicon carbide benchstone, but really aluminium oxide is the correct grain to use with it. And aluminium oxide benchstones are not all that available. You can get them like I show. Uh, but here's the answer no fill sheet or dry rub sheet. It's uh, got a very, very high quality aluminium oxide grain and then a zinc sterate over the top. Put it on a surface plate or you could even use a granite kitchen carving block. A masking tape around the edges to keep it rigid and you can get grits from 60 right through to 600. Uh, it's extremely sharp. It brings these tools up very, very good. Although I've got a little hand stone that brings them up quite good. But uh, yeah, wonderful stuff to use, economic, it's about 80 cents a sheet and you'll get hundreds of laps on your tools. This is the little finishing tool that I had on the shaper. Wipe the shape off. And you might be able to see it's got a curved profile. 
it's got about three or four degrees rake and it would have 25 degrees uh, swivel on it so it, most guys go around to about 45 degrees I find that my shaper just won't feed slow enough to be able to use those true skiving tools so I've only got 20 degrees or whatever um, across there when you once you do that it means that it only travels in one direction comfortably if you try and go back the other way you'll get a real gnarly finish because you're going against the action of the tool and this is a double ender so when one side gets blunt I just swap it over in the tool holder and I can keep the operation going until it gets blunt as well okay a bit of an explanation on tooling and a short run on the shaper all the best for the big break I hope everybody has a good safe time and don't be speeding you will get caught Please like and subscribe.